Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back to my kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Allform, the sister company to Helix Sleep, which if you've been following me for a while, you know I've spoken a lot of. Allform makes sofas and chairs that are American made, modular and easy to assemble. You can assemble a couch in as little as 15 minutes. We received our Allform couch and we absolutely love it. The couch besides the kitchen is the hub in our house. All the activity seems to happen there. We watch videos there, I edit there, we all read there we snuggle there the couch is the place where we all end up landing and for a long time we didn't have the right couch one couch was too small the other one was too large and the one we have right now just like Goldilocks is just right one of the great things about all forms couches is that you can personalize it and customize it for your own space you can choose how many seats you want whether you want to add an ottoman or a chaise you can pick different kinds of fabrics or leather or leg options you can really customize it for yourself there are over 500 unique combinations, including corners and number of seats. It's so great to be able to find the couch that works for your space. All form sofas are made with a scratch and stain resistant fabric. You can also do what we did and opt for leather as well, which is really great for a cleanup. It's the first leather couch I've ever owned, and it's so nice to be able to wipe up any messes. So our particular couch is a three seat sofa with a chaise in whiskey leather and walnut legs. So besides looking great, one of my favorite things about Allform sofas is that they arrive in modular boxes. So they're easier to maneuver. You can put them in a corner if you can't assemble the couch right away. And you don't need any special tools at all to put the couch together. I was able to do this myself. So our couch has only gotten more comfortable with use. Our butts have kind of molded into the couch and I really like having the chaise option to be able to kind of stretch out your legs. Your couch will arrive right at your doorstep if you live in the US, shipping is free. And because because all form ships direct, they can offer premium materials at a reasonable cost. Also, you don't have to worry about the risk of ordering online because Allform offers a 100 day trial. If you're not happy with your couch, they will pick it up and give you a full refund. So we love our couch. If you'd like to get one for yourself, click the link down below or head over to allform.com slash anymade to receive 20% off the couch of your choice. Big thanks to Allform for sponsoring this video and for allowing me to make better content for all of you. Now today I'm going to be testing yet another TikTok recipes. If you've missed my other TikTok tests, I will put a link down below to the playlist. This one was recommended to me by Dare to Be You on Instagram. Thanks so much for getting in touch with me and letting me know about the green goddess salad. Now I have heard about green goddess dressing for a long time. I worked in natural foods for a little while and green goddess Annie's the was the brand I believe that was super popular. It's been around for a long time, but it's all over the place now as a salad. And after reading the recipe, it seems pretty much like a pesto coleslaw. You've got a bunch of chopped cabbage, some cucumbers, and a dressing that you make with basil, spinach, garlic, and some nuts pretty much a straightforward pesto. So the original green goddess salad on TikTok is attributed to baked by Melissa. I'll put a link down below to their channel and it has over 19 million views and people are raving about it. So let's go ahead and make it and see if it's up to the hype. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need are some ingredients and based on this, you can see why it's called the green goddess salad because a lot of ingredients are green. So basically this is going to be like a coleslaw. So we're going to need some cabbage, a small head of green cabbage and some cucumbers, three mini ones or one large one and a bunch of green onions. The rest of the ingredients are going to go into the dressing. If you've never chopped a green cabbage before or cut one up, I'm going to explain a little bit of the anatomy. So the outside leaves tend to be a little bit bruised, so you can peel some of those off, which I've already done. And right here is the stem. This is where the cabbage is attached to the plant. Now this area, along with these sections, have really big ribs. Can you see that? And they be can be a little bit woody. So you can take your knife here and core it out. And basically you're cutting a cone. Now, if you're worried about your knife skills and you know, imp potentially impaling yourself, an easy way to do that instead is just to cut it in half. Then you can see what I mean by the core. So here, right here at the base, all the way to the top, you see it has that woody stalk in there. So 
that gets pretty tough. So we want to remove that. So this is the better way to do it, a little bit safer, just like that. Just a triangular piece. Pop that into the compost if you compost and there you go, right? Now the rest of this we can chop up to our heart's desire. Sometimes I get rid of some of these pieces too, depending on what recipe I'm making. But for this recipe, no. Now this is gonna make a lot of coleslaw. Cabbage, I love cabbage. There are so many great things you can make with cabbage. Great on tacos, great as a slaw, great just shredded as a side little dish on your plate. And baked by Melissa's recipe, it says just to chop the cabbage. It doesn't say how finely, it says you can do it any way you like. But in her video on TikTok, she scoops it. It almost looks like a guacamole. So it's chopped very finely. So to do that, you can use your knife and go like this and shred it in one direction, kind of like a slaw, and then go in the opposite direction and chop it this way. So you get tiny, tiny pieces. You can get it even finer by running your knife over like this. I think this is a great idea for cabbage because it can be a bit tough. And also you're gonna give yourself more surface area for that dressing to soak up. So we're gonna do that until we have something that looks like that in terms of fineness. So I'm gonna add this to a very large bowl. And we also are gonna add some cucumber. I wanna mention that when you're doing something like a cucumber that's round, great idea to slice off a bit like that and then put it flat so now it doesn't roll around, right? And then you can slice it this way. And to get sticks, we'll cut them like this. And they're probably, it's about a quarter inch. Again, we're making this pretty small. I don't want really big hunks of cucumber in my finely chopped cabbage. And then we're gonna go in the opposite direction and chop them into little cubes. Like that. We're also gonna chop up one bunch of green onions or scallions. These look a little bit sad. I'm gonna trim off the sad bits. Put those in the compost. And we're also gonna trim the bottom part. This is really great if you can soak these in a little bit of water and you'll see that the green onion will begin to regrow. I love doing that. After the roots get a little bit longer, I actually like to plunge them right into the dirt in my garden and I'll get a brand new green onion sprouting from the top. If you don't have a garden, that's fine. You can still take these little rootlets and put them in some water and put them right on your windowsill and you'll get more green onions. It's so great and it's a great little project, especially with the kids so they can see something grow. But even if you don't have kids, it's wonderful to see something grow. So save those for later. So that was about six stalks. So I'm gonna chop the rest of my cabbage up in my food processors just because I have it. And I'm just gonna pulse it until it's about the same size as the other bits. Oops, oh, I always do that. I plugged it in, but I forgot to turn on the power strip. Gosh, on. Okay, here we go, pulse. I have one big leaf, but we'll just take that out and we'll just dump that in. Super! Veggies are chopped. Now we're going to make the dressing. So since I have my food processor here, I'm gonna make the dressing in the food processor. In the original video, they show making it in the blender, but I think this is gonna be just fine. Even if you don't have a blender, you could do it in a mortar and pestle. You could try chopping it as well. It's just not gonna be as homogenous, it's not gonna make quite that pesto-y paste, but you could still do it. But, all right, let's get and get started. A shallot or shallot is in the Allen family. It's similar to an onion, but it has a more intense flavor. Really, really love them. If you don't have them, you can substitute yellow onion, a bit of red onion would work, but one small one in here. Two cloves of garlic, and the juice of two lemons. Just using my fingers to strain out any errant seeds. This is gonna give us some of that tang. I think a little zest would be nice in here too, a little lemon zest for that kind of lemony smell. Okay, now we're gonna add a cup of basil, just the leaves, keep out the stalks, stems, whatever you wanna call them. Oh, that smells so good. Basil has such a great smell, kind of anise-y, licorice-y. Spinach, 
in that goes. Some chives, both into here and into the chopped veggies as well. Got some cashews. You can use any kind of nuts. Traditionally in pesto, this would be pine nuts. Now I'm gonna add about a third of a cup of nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is so good. It's yeast, but it's nutritious yeast and delicious tasting. Love this stuff. My kids love it. We put it on our popcorn. I like to sprinkle it on pretty much anything. So this is gonna be pretty loud. So while this is whizzing around, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar and about a quarter cup of olive oil, or just kind of eyeball it until it makes a nice kind of paste. And here we have our chives, cucumbers, and cabbage. In the recipe, it says you can use whatever vegetables you like. And now we're gonna pour the dressing right on top. So the lemon juice and the vinegar in here is gonna help maintain that green color. Basil has this habit of kind of going dark after a little time. All right, lovelies, here we have the giant green goddess salad. This makes enough salad for a good number of people. I suppose if you're eating this as a main course, then this would probably serve six to eight people. It would, looks like presented this way. It would make like a great kind of party snack dip. And that's the way Baked by Melissa seems to have it in their video, scooped. Looks pretty good. It almost kind of reminds you of like a guacamole or something, but a little drier. Alrighty, let's give it a taste. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. Pretty delicious. <laughs> Especially if your delivery mechanism is a tortilla chip, it's really nice. It's very reminiscent of salsa, guacamole, and chips. This whole action of like dip, crunch, yeet, yum. And your taste buds are like, that's kind of familiar because there's onion and garlic in this, but it's a little bit different in terms of its crunch. There's a lot of crunch going on, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel this way. I taste a lot of the corn chip or the tortilla rather than the salad itself. So I'm also gonna just scoop a bit into a bowl. I think this way I'll be able to tell you more about what's going on here. So here we go. Mm -hmm. What I think was really smart about this recipe is that the cabbage is chopped very finely. So all that dressing gets in all the nooks and crannies and makes it very flavorful. I think this would taste even better if we let the flavors sit for say 10 minutes or so, so that they can kind of meld and absorb a bit. And I taste the garlic and the onion. I think the onion is a key part of this, both the chives, the green onions, and the shallot that's in there. That's, I think, the strong flavor that ties everything together. Of course, the basil's in there as well. It's very aromatic. It has this like kind of anise licorice flavor to it. And I'm surprised that it's not as kind of pesto-y essence as I thought it was gonna be. When I read the recipe, I'm like, oh, that's definitely a pesto. I got it, get it. But it's actually more oniony than just a pesto. Uh, if you didn't notice already, this recipe is vegan, so this would make a great side salad to something, or it could be a dish in itself. I really like having it on a tortilla chip. Mm-hmm, so good. I prefer having it on a tortilla chip. It really heightens the crunch. The salad is crunchy, and then you have it on a tortilla chip, and it's even crunchier, and you've got that really great kind of corny crunch, and then that association of chips and salsa and dip with this salad. Alone, I feel like it's a little bit light. I feel like it needs something else, maybe a big fat slab of toast, toasted with a little bit of butter, vegan butter, whatever you want, or some other kind of protein, whatever you would like. Just alone, it feels a little bit not quite enough. But on a tortilla chip, it kind of just changes everything. So the green goddess salad is delicious, and I would say it is up to the hype. It's accessible, and essentially it is a coleslaw seasoned with some pesto. So make your own adaptions, make this recipe work for yourself. If you're not a cabbage fan, if you're not a cucumber fan, which I'm not necessarily, but I think the cucumber totally works. It adds this kind of succulent, vegetal, green flavor that goes really well with the onions and everything else. The onions I think are really, 
the key kind of portion. There's different facets of onion too. We've got the chives, we've got the green onions, and we've got the shallot in there, and some garlic because garlic is delicious. So very flavorful, nutritional yeast, I would definitely add that. It gives it that nice kind of complexity salt and then you've got lemon juice and i'm going to have a whole bunch of it to be eating in the next few days by the way don't forget to subscribe i always forget to say that in the beginning but don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all form for sponsoring this video click the link down below or head over to allform.com slash mma to see how you can get 20 percent off a couch of your choice thanks again for watching i hope you enjoy that one i hope you learned something please share this video with your friends Follow me on social media. I love hearing from you. That's how I learned about this salad and that's why I'm making it. Check out my website. I'll include a printable version of this recipe. Like this video, subscribe. Mm -hmm. And I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>